Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be taking a look at an overall roadmap or guide for you guys to prepare for the Heroic Sith Raid. I'm going to go through different teams to use in each phase, what your damage targets for them should be, and just what kind of characters to gear and prioritize to help your guild clear the Heroic Sith Raid. Currently, only your top-end guilds are able to clear without using the Stormtrooper Han Cheese, and now that we've got a good roadmap for it, hopefully some of these other guilds with lower GPs are going to be able to start clearing this Heroic Sith Raid and start getting yourself those Darth Treya shards. So, if you guys have been wondering where I have been the past few days, uh, I've been dealing with some food poisoning, that's why I haven't put out a video in about half a week. Apologies for that, but here I am, I'm back now, I'm recovered, so do some more Sith Raid videos for you guys, and let's go ahead and get into this video. For Phase 1, basically consider this as the gear check or a team check for your guild overall, because the only team that really seems to work well right now is Jedi Training Ray Resistance teams in here. There's really no other teams we've found so far that really does as well as she can perform. So without a lot of Jedi Train Ray teams, you're probably not going to be able to clear Phase 1 that easily. Right now, we're currently aiming for about 3-4% to once the Exposed nerf goes in. We're guesstimating that we're going to lose about half the damage that we're getting right now with Exposed. And right now, we're aiming for 4-5% to with Jedi Train Ray teams, but the Exposes are only dealing about 30% of the exposed damage on your typical teams. So we're really aiming for three to 4% once that exposed nerf goes in. For your typical Jedi Train Raid team, you want the lead for her, and then of course you want something like Resistance Trooper, Scavenger Ray, and BB-8. And then that fifth slot, it's pretty flexible. I've seen people use R2-D2, I've seen people use a Zeta Barris, I've seen people use Hermit Yoda. For me personally, I use Beast Mar in that fifth slot. She has a lot of healing, a lot of cleansing, a lot of revives. She's a very good character to use with Resistance here in Phase 1 because Dark Nihilus will just tear through your team usually unless you have him in Gear 12. He can two-shot most of your characters on Heroic difficulty. So having her in that fifth slot for me has worked out great. It's kept my team alive and it's allowed me to get the four to five percent that we've been aiming for with our guilds right now. And for Zetas on this team, you absolutely need the leadership Zeta on Jedi Train Ray. There's no way around this. You need that for the cooldown reduction and the Terminator reduction on Darth Nihilus. You also should get the Zeta on BB-8's roll with the punches to call in the extra assist whenever he attacks. So getting him Zeta along with the leadership Zeta on Jedi Train Ray are both two Zetas you should really look at. You can also get the unique for Jedi Train Ray that's going to give her offense up. And then finally, for the healer, if you have Barris, you should really look at the Zeta for her. Getting the protection regeneration is not really needed for Hermit Yoda, but for him, you could get the Master's Training cooldown reductions with his Zeta if you're going to use him in here as well. So you need at least the leadership Zeta for Jedi Train Ray, and definitely look at getting the Zeta on bb 8s roll with the punches too. For other teams that you could use in Phase 1, Another team I've seen is people try using a Thrawn lead with Magma Trooper. It's a quick, easy way to get at least a few hundred thousand damage on Heroic. It can help you push for that 3-4% to goal that you're aiming for with Phase 1. But ideally, there's really no other teams that seem to work right now with Phase 1. And it's really just stuck with Jedi Train Ray. And that's been the roadblock for most of your teams here. Is that we're really stuck with using Jedi Train Ray. And there's no decent alternative to get. But hopefully, eventually, we will find some. But for now... Just focus on getting Jedi Train Ray for Phase 1 and get those Zetas that I recommended for her team. For Phase 2, we are using Phoenix and Ewok teams here with aiming for 1% with each team. They are not going to get a lot of damage against Darth Sion, especially in his buggy state right now where he's removing too much turn meter. He also hits like an absolute truck, so it's very hard to get 1% with both these teams, but it is doable. And we're aiming for 1% with each with each team so that each person in the guild can do that 1% with these teams and clear phase 2. However, if you guys are having trouble here, you can always use the remainder of your Jedi Train Ray teams to clear out this phase. For Phoenix, you want to use a lineup of a Hera lead with Ezra, Sabine, Kanan, and Zeb. You want to have at least the Zeta on Sabine with her offense up and crit chance up to Phoenix allies. But you can also get the Zeta on Kanan here, so you can give Foresight up to another ally, gain the turn meter whenever Foresight expires. This will help him be a little more tanky, help him survive some more hits, and overall help boost the damage for your team with both these Zetas. You can also get some other Zetas, like, like Ezra's Flourish, but it's by no means recommended. Same with Hera's ability and with Zeb as well. You don't need those Zetas. 
but they are a nice boost to your damage. For Ewoks, it's a little trickier. You do want the Chirpa lead, and you do want to use a combination of Low Gray and Ewok Elder with Ewok Scout, and then finally you want Wicket in that other slot. And currently, this is not a very easy, easy to obtain character in Wicket, but if you don't have Wicket, you could try something like a Fulcrum Ahsoka with your Ewoks that can help do some damage. Also, Ahsoka's Whirlwind Zeta allows her to ignore armor and that attack cannot be evaded. So again, that Zeta is going to be helpful with her in there as well. But really, you do want to have you do want to have Wicked in there as the other character for your Ewok team. And ideally, you do want the Zeta on the Chirpa lead. This Zeta is going to help with calling an assist, which cannot be countered. And also, it boosts the damage on their basic attacks too. So getting the Zeta on Chirpa is, by all means, necessary. And then you could also get the Zeta on Wicked for the protection recovery, but it's not going to be that helpful. So really, just focus on getting the Zeta for Chirpa for your Ewoks. And ideally, if you don't have enough damage with these two teams, like I said, try some Jedi Train Raid teams. You can also use Imperial Troopers to help squeeze out that extra percent or two to help clear this phase. Imperial Troopers without using Death Trooper in this phase, because Death Trooper is going to be needed in Phase 3 for one of the teams there. And speaking of Phase 3... For Phase 3, we found two different teams that work really well with this. We have the Night Sister led team, and this is something I mentioned in my team so far before. Your Night Sisters with a Zeta Asajj lead can do a lot of turn mirror that can't be resisted to Darth Treya. There's also the ability to add 50% turn mirror to them whenever they fall below 100% health. And this is also very helpful because it'll trigger on the Bonds of Weakness. And it is not going to be something that will be nerfed with the on damage effects coming with the nerf to Stormtrooper Han and some other uniques out there. This Zeta leadership ability will be untouched and it will be safe to use with the nerfs coming with phase three. So this is something that you can invest in without being afraid of losing out on the ability for fighting against Darth Treya. And what you want to use with your Night Sisters is you basically, you don't want to topple a lot because eventually Darth Treya is going to gain a lot of bonus damage. She gets 10% bonus damage every time a lightsaber is defeated so you don't want to topple her too much you want to kind of alternate between letting her go for a turn or two then destroying the lightsabers letting her to be toppled getting some nice damage bonus in and then rinse and repeat this cycle until you hit enrage and this should allow you to easily get at least two percent you want to aim for at least three to four percent however that's not going to be doable with everyone but ideally getting for three percent is something that you want to strive for with your night sisters in this fight you'll notice that i have talzin and zombie in this lineup you do not need them but zombie is an incredibly good character for your night sisters to fight against darth Treya. the zombie will eat up the isolates it will die and then be res resurrected so that it can get past the non-reviving ability for isolate if you don't have mother talzin visa's mark can also work really well in this team if Daka ever gets isolated, she can't heal up the rest of the team, and that's why you have Visa's Mar, who can constantly counter, give give the health regeneration to the allies, help steal up, she can help keep everybody alive, and also give some bonus defense penetration for your Night Sisters to really tear apart Darth Treya when she is toppled. So Mother Talzin Zombie, not needed. You can use Visa's Mar, you can use another healer in place of Mother Talzin, but Zombie is a hard one to get around. Without Zombie, you're really going to have a hard time. You could try using some other characters that may be able to resurrect, like Scareful Pathfinder, but I don't know if that one's going to work really well. You're best off using Zombie, so start grinding on Zombie, get her geared up, and start up for your heroic teams because she's really going to be great for your Night Sisters. But the other team that we have found works really well in Phase 3 is a Commander Luke Skywalker led Rebel team with using a Han Solo from the Rancor raid in here with someone who can give tenacity up like rex or Churret, and death trooper and this is what i said this is why i said you don't want to use death trooper with your imperial troopers because this team is a really easy way to get a good four to five percent out of phase three and the trick here is basically you're going to defeat one of the lightsabers you're going to apply death mark to darth treya and then you're going to have Zeta Han used his standalone ability and what he's going to do is he's going to be pretty much immune to daze. He is going to constantly counter on Darth Treya and if you have him modded out correctly he'll hit for a good 70,000 per hit against Darth Treya and then the death mark ability is going to add bonus damage. He can hit almost upwards of 100,000 damage per hit against Darth Treya while he has standalone going on. So having him counter against Darth Treya constantly, it's a great way to knock out 2-3% very, very easily with him in there. And then once his standalone expires, you can then just knock out the two other lightsabers. 
topple Treya, and then squeeze in some damage to get the rest of the damage. So you can hit a 4-5% to threshold, and all about a run that takes about 3-4 to four minutes. It's very easy to do. The death mark nerf, if it ever happens, it's not going to overall affect the damage too much. You'll still be able to hit a 4% damage threshold with this team very, very easily. So this is going to be an easy team to go to for a lot of people. It's a lot less investment than Night Sisters. A lot of people still have Commander Luke Skywalker and Raid Han Zeta from back in their meta days. So this is another team, very easy for a lot of people to work on. You don't need Ezra. I have Ezra with Zeta on his flourish. You don't need him. You could use Rex and Turret together, get a lot of tenacity up, and remove the turn meter for everybody with squad discipline with Rex, get in that extra damage on the topple. And really, this is a quick and easy team for you guys to use. So this is a team I would recommend using for Phase 3 over Night Sisters. And Night Sisters could be also used in Phase 4 when finding some of those characters. And speaking of Phase 4, let's go ahead and get into that phase. For phase 4, you quite literally throw the kitchen sink at the raid. You basically use everything you have left in your tank. You throw pretty much everything you have left at phase 4. It's pretty easy once you get Darth Nihilus taken down. He's the hardest part of phase 4. Once you get him taken out, Scion and Treya are quite a bit easier. They don't have one-hit kills like Darth Nihilus does. Darth Nihilus can ignore protection. He can one-hit kill with Annihilate. He is the hardest part of your fight in phase 4. Once you get him taken out, it's much easier to take out the other two. Darth Treya, she's a little tricky. I mean, she doesn't have the AoE ability anymore. And thankfully, you do have the abilities that allow you to remove cycles of pain and suffering. You can get rid of Isolate, all that stuff. And it's really, you want to bring in a balanced team for everyone. You want to bring in at least one tank, some damage dealers, and some healer and support. Because that depends on what role they're going to get for helping to remove those debuffs. And what special ability they get so they can keep your team running until you get to Enrage. For the different characters, you pretty much use the same things that you've used in other phases. Darth Nihilus, you don't want to use basic attacks against him. That will regenerate protection. Scion, you want to go for assist and counters and stealth attacks. Anything that can help prevent him from countering. And for Treya, you don't want to focus so much on assists and other things. You want to more go for the strong one hits that really do a lot of damage while preventing a lot of stacks of bonds of weakness from building up. And really, you just throw everything you have in them. Some teams that are really good for this phase are going to be Imperial Troopers and First Order. Imperial Troopers, you don't really use them much outside of Phase 2. First Order is great here for whittling down Darth Scion and Darth Treya. They can regenerate a lot of health and protection on their own. They're going to be able to do a lot of damage while using basic attacks and their special moves. They can really do a lot of damage. And ideally, you have about, I think, 10 million dam or 10 million health on average for each boss here in phase four. So if you can knock out at least 1 million damage on one of the bosses, that's good for getting at least 10% for that boss and really doing a lot of damage. So pretty much kitchen sink, throw everything you have at them. Darth Vader with the Zeta on his leadership, also really useful against Nihilus and Treya. They're both weak to turn meter reduction that can't be resisted. So if you can help shut them down and keep them going for a little bit longer, that's going to help boost your damage too. Night Sisters, they are also useful in Phase 4. The Zeta Asajj lead, really going to be great here. All the Bonds of Weakness is going to help supercharge their turn meter. They can also be helpful against Nihilus and Treya. So both those teams with the unresistible turn meter are going to be great here. Any Jedi training raid teams that you somehow still have left, using in phases one and two, gonna be great here for taking out Darth Nihilus. That's gonna really help boost your damage, get him taken down quickly, and help close the door on getting phase four done. So that's pretty much it for this hero guide and roadmap. I hope you guys have found some teams here that are useful. I know that Commander Luke Skywalker team in Phase 3, that was a godsend once we found out about that team that really helped us close out Phase 3 pretty easily. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask down below in the, in the comment section. I'll do what I can to answer them. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And to all of my McMinions out there, thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you guys later.